hello everyone. My name is Adam Ross, as Stephen just uh, announced. I'm talking to you from sunny uh, San Francisco, California, where it's very summery here, uh, even though it's we're still in the middle of, of February. Um, I'm presently sharing a, a screen uh, of my project square for a unit that I'll explain in a moment. So that's what you're seeing. You're not seeing me. You'll see that uh, this is for K seventh grade. K stands for Chinese American International School. Uh, this is the school I work at as a Chinese curriculum specialist. And I've been a two-time participant in this online workshop as well as the summer uh, uh, institute in Honolulu, which I highly recommend that you all do. So do all the work, get your homework done as Stephen is urging you to and apply to go this summer. Um, I'm gonna share two different project squares that I have uh, developed and are, and are still currently developing. Uh, briefly about myself, I don't actually work in the classroom. Uh, we're, I work with our middle school teachers at Chinese American. We're a, uh, a, a, a dual uh, a language immersion school in Chinese and English. And our kids, when they get to middle school, are already at intermediate and then by eighth grade even getting to advanced or pre-advanced levels. Um, part of my work this year is to actually try to implement more project-based learning into our pre-existing curriculum. So going to the Summer Institute in Honolulu last summer, um, I had a, a couple of, of, um, of projects I wanted to work with, both with seventh grade and eighth grade. So I'm sharing with you first an idea for a seventh grade unit. So last year, our, um, our seventh grade teacher, or one, or one of our seventh grade teachers, they, they co-teach seventh and eighth grade, um, uh, this is Chen Xiaoqing, or Xiaoqing Chen, if you said it in English style. She had developed a unit called Water, Water Everywhere, and then, of course, the ending of this, but not a drop to drink. And I just mentioned that I'm speaking to you from sunny California, where up until last year, we had a five-year drought here in the entire state of California. And uh, even though we had a lot of rain last year, the drought hasn't ended, and it's even uh, brought in other problems that because we had so much rain, we had so much vegetation in uh, non-urban areas, and then there were tremendous fires just north of us in Sonoma and uh, uh, Sonoma County and, this, and around the city of Santa Rosa. And then later on, of course, the terrible fires that were around, um, uh, around the LA area. So we were thinking that in terms of trying to go deeper into the water, water unit, that we need to actually engage the students in, into some sort of projects that could engage with the idea of water. So I've shared with you um, on the screen uh, the meaningful purpose of this investigation. So, so we, we, we wanted to have the kids, uh, our students, look at, at excessive water use in the community and look at ways to, to harvest precious rainwater, given that we've had so little rain, and right now we have no rain right here in, in California, we have a, a summer weather coming in, uh, that we could potentially use as, as gray water uses. And then we also, I wish to look further about the quality of the water that we drink both here in the US and in China. And then this could potentially, um, and we're actually developing right now as a collaboration between our English language science classes, which also goes into uh, water uh, uses or investigation of water uses and our Chinese classes. So I'm gonna um, uh, share more of my screen and show you what I started to develop for a problem, or, uh, a challenging problem or question, as well as an authentic real world purpose. So you'll see that the, what I've typed out in regular text without any bold, without any yellow highlighting, is what I came up with in last summer's Institute. So to read through the, the challenging problem, though we've just emerged from a five year drought, and then this is writing in the summer of, of 2017, we can no longer assume that our water sources in California will continue to be plentiful. And how can we teach people in our community that we need to make water conservation a lifelong effort and not just something that we do when we're in the middle of a drought? Um, so when I brought this idea back to uh, to collaborate with with Xiao Qing, she had some other ideas. And then in addition, in talking to our, our middle school science teacher, Susan Sherman, she had some other ideas. So what I've put below are things that we have been developing uh, ongoing through this year. So in a way, this project square is, is a living document. It, we've been taking the ideas and actually putting more into it that, that even risks being a little bit verbose within the, within the square. But for our purposes, we're just trying to get all of our heads together to think what can we do 
And now I'm going to scroll down to show you what I was talking about where the, the, the regular text is what I came up with last summer. And then the, the yellow bolded and highlighted text are the new ideas we came up with. Okay, so looking back again on the left hand side of the, 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 the problem, I came up with looking at how can we teach people about water conservation as a lifelong effort. And then in collaboration with my colleagues Susan and Xiao Ching, we, we decided to look at maybe we can do a bigger project and actually have the students work on creating uh, devices places that will collect rainwater from our drains that we can use for traditional what we call gray water or, or water that can be used not for, for drinking but for used uh, to, to, um, to water our plants in our garden. And then further, um, Xiao Qing is particularly interested in, in investigating um, about the uses of water filtration filters and how they might be produced and distributed on a larger scale, maybe engage the students to think about how they might design something like this. Investigate too in science class, how clean is the water we actually drink and do some experiments with unfiltered water and filtered water. And then this is something that we wish to extend even beyond this unit so that at the end of the year we bring our students to Beijing China for a three-week study trip and they're in home stays for the entire time and we thought that we're going to investigate to see if the students can actually bring inexpensive water filtration uh, devices to give to their host families and talk about the process of learning they did and show them that how they, they could potentially use these filters in their own homes to further clean water so that they can extend their learning in a real-world environment with real people in Beijing Beijing using Chinese to show what they've been learning both in science class and um, and in Chinese class. Um, so this segues into the authentic real world purpose a little bit in terms of looking at uh, water conservation. We'll do some language learning activities, actually reading texts and, and watching videos where we can see um, about efforts to conserve water in, here in California and as well as in, in Beijing and Taiwan. And then in addition, uh, we'll take a look at, at, at uh, examples of water reclamation efforts that are currently being done in Singapore and in Israel, two places where water conservation is at a premium. Um, and then even do, do some discussion about whether to thinking what is ultimately the, the best way to conserve water, to, to actually try to conserve water on an individual way or to have government sponsor water reclamation and to, to, to think about those different things. And then in terms of brainstorming beyond what I came up with, um, as I said, we create a water harvesting system at school. So there's a hands-on project and then do actual testing of water filtration in science classes with some checkups again in Chinese class so that we can actually have a connection between our, our regular science classes and the um, uh, and our Chinese classes. I'll scroll down now to show about uh, community partners and, and uh, public audience. So I'm currently using the, the, the new template for this. And for community partners, my idea is, is that we're, we're focusing on our school community, uh, but we can also extend learning to, 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 to in terms of having students do posters, for example, that can connect with our lower school students who could read these as well. And then even bring them home so students can even talk to their parents in English in most cases about what they're doing. And then um, in brainstorming again with my partners, we thought why not put some of these posters in Chinese senior centers, which we have uh, several of here in, um, in uh, San Francisco. And then of course our, our uh, means to extend the, the water filtration project into our, our uh, Beijing visit at the end of the school year. And then finally, for the, the product and public um, audience, we actually came up with a number of, of ideas to try to give as much uh, a difference, uh, many varieties of activities for the students, and in some cases, in, ter in terms of determining what kind of project the students may want to, to do, give them some actual uh, voice and choice. So all the students would do a poster, and then would do something, do something else, that they could either uh, focus on learning about water quality and then have presentation materials ready for when we go to Beijing, um, or they, they focus on, on working within our school community to try to educate all of our students, sixth graders as well as eighth graders, maybe lower school students, about how we can change behaviors both here in the school and perhaps at home. Or for the kids who want to do hands-on stuff, they can actually work on the, on the water harvesting system. And so these details are things that we're working on. So finally, getting down to the why do learners care? I originally wrote and, and actually 
gave a link um, about how Governor Jared Brown has said that ongoing wildfires because of, of our dearth of water are the new normal. And this is, a, a, um, I can even open this uh, link and share with you later if we have time. This is something that he just stated just in December. So this is very current for us. Uh, but then also extending in terms of the new ideas we brought in to look at water drinking quality so that there's actual ways for students to engage with Chinese people in China to talk about the project that they're doing. Okay, so that is in a nutshell our, our water unit. So my name is Florencia Westenstow and I'm currently a graduate student at Brigham Young University and as Stephen mentioned I'm talking to you from Utah and I'm really excited to share with you a project that I implemented with my Spanish 101 students this last semester. I'm going to talk about two main points in this presentation. The first one will be about the revisions that I made to my product square. And the second one will be a brief overview of the project because I think that after you've seen the overview, it'll make more sense as to why I changed the product square. And to start off, I'm gonna talk about the process of the product square. When thinking about implementing a project, I really wanted to find a project that would fit into the curriculum for the class. I was reviewing the upcoming units and one of them was all about daily routines. So I thought that the best way to address daily routines with a project would be to help international students at our university. So in this project, my students would interview Spanish speaking international students to create a brochure or a website depicting the cultural differences that international students encounter as they start their experience at BYU. I wanted my students to focus on the question, how can we help international students adjust to life in Utah? After creating this product square, I took my idea to one of my classes where we were talking about projects and I got some feedback that completely changed my original idea. Some of the feedback that I got was about the lack of sustained inquiry and then also that my students wouldn't necessarily care about this topic. So after the feedback, um, I made some changes. For instance, the question changed from how can we help international students adjust to life in Utah to how can stories change the world. My students were exploring the power of stories because I thought it would be more interesting for students to collect other people's stories, particularly stories from people who might, have, who might be marginalized. And as you can see in this product square, I still wasn't sure about the community partners or the product or the public product and the public audience, but I had narrowed down the purpose to that of facilitating um, the development of unity and compassion in the community. I then shared this product square with the NFLRC and I got some feedback that ended up shaping the project. The feedback was that I needed to sharpen the purpose and that there was a lack of focus on the public product. So for the final product square, the purpose changed from facilitating the development of unity and compassion in the community to inspiring others to overcome challenges. In addition, the public product um, changed in that we created a website to house all the stories that my students collected. And then this website was shared with our community partners who then shared it through their social media channels. And in addition, as you can see in this product square, I also narrowed down the community partners to the Hispanic Center of Utah, um, the BYU Multicultural Center, as well as the, Span the Department of Spanish and Portuguese here at the university. So looking back at the original idea of helping international students, my product square changed in dramatic ways. And my main takeaway from this experience was to not be afraid of change from the first product square to the final product square, every single aspect of this product square changed. And I think that in the end, these changes truly benefited my students. And so in the end, the project that my students embarked on was this project from this final product square. They interviewed native Spanish speakers, um, and then we put those stories, um, the challenging stories that the native Spanish speakers told, in a website that then we shared with these community partners. Now I'm briefly going to tell you about the project. I think that this project will be of importance for those of you who have been wondering about implementing 
projects for novice students. And before I start, I want to tell you a little bit of, I want to give you a little bit of background information on my students. The, um, this is the picture of the students I implemented the project with, and it was a Spanish 101 class. And at BYU, Spanish 101 means it's the very first Spanish class. And the majority of my students had some previous experience with learning a language, mostly from high school, but a few had never taken a language class before. I had two sections of Spanish, and it ended up being about 35 students that participated in the project. I found that the best way to structure the project was by using the three modes of communication, the interpretive, the interpersonal, and the presentational. And for the interpretive, the students interviewed native Spanish speakers um, to collect their inspiring stories. Oh, sorry, for the interpretive, the students explored examples of inspiring stories in Spanish. So we read some stories of some inspiring stories. And then for the interpersonal, they interviewed Spanish speakers um, to collect their inspiring stories. And they also interviewed um, advanced students of Spanish so they could better understand what the native speakers had told them. And then for the presentational, the students wrote their story, the stories that were told by the native Spanish speakers. And the first thing that my students needed to do was to think about the stories they know that have inspired them. So I had them make a list of their favorite movies, books, and people to talk with. Then in order to launch the unit, we read the story Frederick, and we talked about how sometimes help is physical, and at other times the best support for overcoming challenges is not tangible. Next, we, talk, we listened to the TED Talk, The Danger of a Single Story, and did some activities in Spanish to talk about the importance of capturing multiple perspectives when telling stories about other people. For the next step, we read the inspiring story of Sonia Sotomayor, who is a native Spanish speaker and a US Supreme Court justice. And we know that learners need opportunities to make predictions about the input they're going to hear. So in th this activity was an opportunity for learners to read about a Spanish speaker who overcame challenges and also to practice the reading strategy of making predictions. And here are some student examples. After discussing the story of Sonia Sotomayor and the elements that made her story inspiring, my students worked with partners to look at other stories and identify the element that makes those stories inspiring. Then we did some activities to help students conduct the interviews. They needed to learn how to ask questions, how to listen to a story, and how to pick out details from a story. After the preparation, my students interviewed native Spanish speakers about their stories of overcoming challenges, and my students also recorded these interviews. Students brought um, their recorded interviews to class and listened to the interviews to figure out what they didn't understand. Then students from more advanced Spanish classes from, at the university came to help them interpret their interviews. In preparation for this, I taught my students how to use these two online resources, Lingue and Spanish Dictionary. And more importantly, my students wrote out some questions for the, for the experts. After interpreting the interviews, my students were ready to write. And we know that students need to spend time planning for their writing. So students filled out storyboards. After writing their draft of the story, students peer edited each other's stories. One important aspect of scaffolding for novice learners is providing sentence starters and key vocabulary so that they stay in the target language. So as you can see in these student examples at the bottom, I've provided some um, vocabulary for them to use. And during the previous peer edits, I noticed that my students needed additional help with the organization of their stories. So I created this activity to help them. And in this peer editing session, the students picked a paragraph that they wanted help with. In the first round, their peer read through the sentences in the paragraph and wrote the main idea for each sentence. Then another peer looked at what the first peer, ha peer had written and organized them, those main ideas into the order that made the most sense. At the end, the student was able to restructure their paragraph to make the most sense. After revising their stories, my students submitted the stories along with a photo of the person they interviewed. 
Then those stories were put on a website, and this is a screenshot of our website. We have a photo of every native speaker that was interviewed, and people can click on the photo to get their stories. And a couple of students also made videos of the stories. We then shared our website with our community partners so they could share them, they could share it through their social media. And after implementing this project, I discovered that it's all about scaffolding. Before starting, I was hesitant that my students wouldn't have enough language and that they could only do certain projects for novice learners. But now I know that novice students can do any project as long as the appropriate scaffolding is provided. Um, through the process of revising the product square, I learned to, not to limit myself to the, cur to the curriculum or to my own perspective. Hopefully, as you're working on your product squares, you're not afraid to completely change your idea and also not afraid to implement a project that you're passionate about just because your students are beginning learners. So thank you for allowing me to share uh, my project with you. Just to go back to this previous slide, I have included all the details of my project and some of the documents I created to help my students. Um, and I have put it up into the NFLRC's PBL, rep PBLL repository if you'd like to check it out. And I'm happy to answer any questions through email for you. And thanks again for letting me share this with you.